Andy sits down with the toy hunter, Jordan Hembro. Checking out new Star Wars toys at Toy Fair. And much, much more. Now, from the Lucasfilm headquarters, it's the Star Wars Show. Hey, I'm Anthony Carboni. And I'm Andy Gutierrez. Welcome to the Star Wars Show, a show where the rumors are fake and the news is real. Which means we're bringing back Teak. That's right, you asked for it. Is that news or a rumor? You'll find out. <laughs> Yesterday, Lucasfilm officially announced the start of principal photography on the still untitled Han Solo film by releasing this image from Pinewood Studios in London. The image shows cast members Woody Harrelson, Donald Glover, Amelia Clark, Chewbacca, Alden Ehrenreich, and Fleabag creator and actress Phoebe Waller-Bridge gathered in the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon with directors Christopher Miller and Phil Lord at the controls. The untitled Han Solo Star Wars story hits theaters in 2018. May 25th marks the 40th anniversary of Star Wars A New Hope, and this year's Star Wars celebration is kicking things off with an epic tribute to the film that started it all. A panel hosted by Warwick Davis will feature Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy, as well as discussions with some of the saga's biggest stars as they reminisce about the impact the film has had on generations of fans. And because it's celebration, and celebration is a place for surprises, make sure you attend this event. That's all we're gonna say. Read between the lines, people. The panel begins bright and early Thursday, April 13th. And for more information and tickets, check out StarWarsCelebration.com. Rogue One may still be in theaters, but you can bring it home very soon. And by very soon, we mean it'll be available on Digital HD on March 24th. But wait, there's more! Rogue One will also be available on Blu-ray 3D and 2D, DVD, and on demand April 4th. Bonus features include a rogue idea detailing how John Knoll pitched the idea, Visions of Hope, the look of Rogue One focuses on the filmmaker's design choices, The Princess and the Governor shows how Leia and Tarkin were created for the movie, plus looks at the characters and actors behind Jin, Cassian, K2SO, Baze, Chirrut, Bodhi, and Saw, a feature about Rogue One Easter eggs, and much, much more. Do you know if they got my email upstairs about doing a nine disc special edition that's just five discs of Chirrut and Baze hanging out? You know I don't know. Okay, well for more details, check out StarWars.com. I should hear back any day. Yeah. Toy Fair took place last weekend in New York, and wouldn't you know it, our own Justin Bolger was there to show you all of the new Star Wars goodies you have to look forward to in 2017. I'm so jealous of Justin right now. <laughs> What's up guys, I'm here in New York Toy Fair to check out all of Hasbro's 40th anniversary Star Wars collectibles and to see what other kinds of Star Wars stuff we can find on the floor. These are brand new Star Wars, we call them Mimojis. They're blind bagged, you don't know which one you're gonna get, and they should be in stores within the next month or two. This is the Star Wars model kits from Bandai. The sprues are molded in colors, which makes them easy to put together, because first of all, you don't need glue, but then you also don't need to paint them. Over here, we have the Meisho Movie Realization line, and they are based on feudal Japanese characters. You can see the armor is faithfully recreated, and then you've got the Soul of Chagokin line. C-3PO has been released already, and R2 is coming out soon. These are two new Rogue One sets. These will be coming out March 1st. The Battle on Scarif and the Y-Wing Starfighter. Here we have some of our new 6 inch Black Series, our 40th anniversary die-cast collection. We've upped our game another step with Poe Dameron's X-Wing pilot helmet. We've actually put surround sound into the helmet itself. And it actually fits my big head. The great thing about Centerpiece is that it acts literally as a centerpiece to your collection. And we're still carrying on with Rogue One action figures. There's a lot of characters. Star Wars is full of characters. I don't think we'll ever catch up. 40 years ago, a little company called Kenner started making Star Wars figures. They made 12. We're kind of recreating this display stand. So you'll be able to buy the Early Bird Legacy Pack, which is the reversible stand, and you can put all of your six inch action figures against it and recreate that kind of original 12 lineup. Now there are a couple of figures that we hadn't produced, which we're revealing today. The vinyl Cape Jawa. And also the Death Star Commander here as well. And these are on the original Kenner oh, packaging, yes, right? Like this is yeah, exactly. So we went back and looked at the original Kenner packaging. We had to change the design a little bit to allow it to hang, but essentially we've taken a lot of inspiration from what it originally was. That's a wrap from Toy Fair, the ultimate power in the toy universe. Be sure to keep your eyes peeled for all of the awesome Star Wars stuff you saw today on The Star Wars Show. The captain says you are a friend. I will not kill you. 
All right, guys, this week we are joined on the couch by the toy hunter, pop culture expert, and Star Wars super geek, Jordan Hemro. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So what would you say is the toy that got you hooked? The original Star Wars 12 Becks. And I'll never forget that I was in my classroom in New Jersey at Jesse F. George School in New Jersey. And I see my dad come in the classroom and he gave them to me in class and I actually opened them up and I used them for show and tell. <laughs> Like, wow. this show and tell, here's my Ben Kenobi. So what's more fun for you, the, the hunt mm -hmm. or the find? The real joy of everything is connecting people to their childhood. Mm -hmm. I've actually seen grown men cry and say, I haven't had this since I was five. And that brings up an interesting point, though, about Star Wars Completists, people who buy yeah. everything. Can you tell me how things have changed this time around? Toy companies are making stuff in such mass quantities nowadays. Looking forward, the only way these new toys are going to be worth money is if the companies really make a concerted effort to oh. produce them in limited numbers as well. Exclusives. You know, yeah. you've got your, your Comic-Con exclusives, you have oh, your, yeah. your limited runs, stuff like that. Is that worth holding on to in boxes? And Yeah, I think that stuff's always going to go up in value because right off the bat, you know, you've got this perfect synergy of limited quantity with very, very savvy marketing. And what happens is people stand online for these figures and they hold them and they covet them and invariably they go up in value because you do have these completists who want everything. I got to get everything. What kind of tips would you give Star Wars collectors? The biggest thing I always tell people is collect what you love. Don't worry about if it's going to make you money or it's going to be worth money. Just really, really collect what's important to you. And then, you know, when you get to that, if you find the vintage stuff, try and collect it in box. And trust me, there's a lot of box stuff still out there. And just preserve it. Keep it in, you know, keep it in good condition. And most importantly, if you have it, store it someplace safe. And I always tell people, your toys just like everything else in life, just like your pets, mm -hmm. should live where you live. That's what's really going to give you the most joy out of what you love and collecting. You said in an interview that no one ever asks you for Jar Jar. Yeah, nobody ever asked me for a Jar Jar Binks. Why? You know what? He's awesome. Jar Jar kind of got a bad rap. But he, and he has such fun merch. Jar Jar, I'm going to say right now, okay? Jar Jar is really underappreciated. Let's bring him back. Let's br Let's All right, should we do it right now? Yeah. All right, we're officially bringing him back. All right, cool. There you go. Starting a movement, guys. Jar Jar 2017. <laughs> was a very toy-filled episode. Yeah, I know. It's almost as if we planned it that way. And since we've spent the last nine minutes or so talking about toys, I see no problem in keeping the Star Wars Toy-tacular going. By I just can't believe we're going with Star Wars Toy-tacular. Yeah. toy yoda -thon just didn't get approved. What? Who didn't like that? That is gold. Evil, I guess. But we want to know what your favorite Star Wars toy of all time is. Oh, I had a breakaway Kenner speeder bike, the mm -hmm. little crash damage one. Oh. And I used to just slam it into things in my backyard would, all day long. You yeah. would. Send us your favorites using the hashtag best Star Wars toy and we'll feature our favorites here next week. What was yours? It's actually a toy Yoda. A little, toy a little, little Yoda. How appropriate. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching and may the force be with you. Including their early encounters with that card playing swindler Landcat. Land cat. <laughs> that card playing blah. Land cat. Including their early encounters with that card playing blah. You're looking for the word land cat. <laughs> that card playing swindler Lando Calrissian. The untitled haunt. <laughs> land cat. <laughs>